What's going on guys and welcome to the next crack a pack episode today for a very special episode We have a pack of Chronicles not something that we get to open very often I believe we've opened these maybe once before uh, so to be able to open it again is awesome I love this series because we do get to open awesome packs like this uh, I do not know necessarily what the rare is gonna be so I'll do the best I can to kind of point it out Of course, we're gonna go through every card though and actually figure out what our first round draft pick would be if we were drafting this set so Again, I do not know uh, what necessarily are the best cards in this set, but I'm going to do the best I can, uh, and hopefully we get something awesome for you guys. So, we start off with an Azur Drake, 3 and a blue for a 2-4 flyer. Pretty straightforward card, uh, but blue-white flyers is always good. I'm perfectly fine with this. It's not an amazing card. It's 2-4, like it's got a big butt, so it's going to be hopefully difficult at least to burn out. Uh, but and hopefully it's gonna survive combat pretty well, but it's not gonna be dealing too much damage It is only two, but still I think it's a serviceable flyer uh, not too unhappy with that uh, So far probably would go with it horn of deafening is an artifact for four mana You can pay two and tap it target creature deals no damage in combat this turn uh, This is sort of like a really bad maze of it <laughs> Uh, that's the best way that I can describe it. Uh, you have to invest four mana just to play it, two mana to actually take something out of combat, uh, or excuse me, it deals no combat damage this turn, so you don't even actually take it out of combat. Uh, and you can only do it once per turn. Not a huge fan of this, it just seems like a really big investment for not much of a payoff. Uh, Fallen Angel, this might actually be the rare. So three and two black for a three three flyer. And you can pay zero and sacrifice a creature to give Fallen Angel plus two plus one until end of turn. So far, this is definitely the pick. This is a really powerful card. 3-3 uh, three, three flyer for 5. Not amazing, but not bad either. But being able to sacrifice a creature to give this a huge buff of plus 2 and plus 1 is really, really good. Uh, you can obviously do this in the middle of combat, so ideally you're going to be able to do this at a time where it really, really benefits you more than anything. Uh, so I really like that. Because it's a 0 mana effect too, it's kind of awesome. So I like Fallen Angel quite a lot. Uh, Wall of Shadows uh, is 1 and 2 black for a 0, 1, I believe. I think that's a 1 or a 4. No, it's a 1. Uh, damage dealt to Wall of Shadows by creatures it blocks is reduced to 0. Wall of Shadows cannot be the target of spells or effects that can target only walls. I don't really like this card. It's very much a stall card, which is perfectly fine in some decks, but in general, I really don't like them. Uh, and this one is just, like, really not great, so not a fan. Uh, Dievanot, Archer, Dievanot, I, I, mispronouncing, I'm, uh, whatever. Two and a white for a one, two. You can tap it and it deals one damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Uh, this is actually a decent card. I'm not opposed to this. Yeah, it only deals one damage, but that's extra damage that you can stack on top. Uh, so I like that. Uh, not more than Fallen Angel though, for sure. This is definitely just kind of a filler card. Ashnod's Altar is an artifact for three mana. Uh, you can pay zero mana, sacrifice a creature to add two colorless mana to your mana pool. Play this ability only as an interrupt, so you can do it as an instant. Uh, I love this card. It's definitely a little more of a constructed card in my opinion, but there are probably certain decks that you can kind of abuse with this. Uh, it does give you a lot of mana if you've got a lot of cheap creatures, so in certain decks I would imagine that you can really, really abuse that. Uh, I think I would prefer to have something like Fallen Angel, at least pick one, uh, just because one, it's a board affecting creature, which is a little more exciting to me. Ashnod, Ashnod's Altar is much more of a, sort of an enabler card, uh, so I'd like to have some of the pieces shown to me first before picking up the altar. That being said, this is a powerful card, and I could be very wrong in that pick. So. <laughs> Uh, Urza's Mine is a land as part of the Tron cycle. You can tap it to add one colorless mana to your mana pool. If you also control the mine, the tower, and the power plant all together on the field, this adds two colorless mana to your mana pool instead of just one. Uh, this, as a cycle, makes a very powerful constructed deck, as most people know. Uh, Modern Tron is absolutely fantastic. Popper Tron is even quite good. Uh, really, really powerful deck. However, in limited, I am not a fan. Uh, you're relying on three cards to make colorless mana. I think the colorless part is really, really difficult. Not only that, but you are relying on three cards all at once, and you're not going to be able to build your deck around fetching these out very easily. So, not a fan of them. Uh, most of the time, they're just going to be one colorless mana, so not really worth it. Uh, Argothian Pixies. 
Uh, two one for one in a er, excuse me a two one for one in a green yes cannot be blocked by artifact creatures any damage dealt to the pixies uh, by artifact creatures is reduced to zero this is just like random upside <laughs> um, it's like I mean it's fine it's a two one for two I guess that's cool but like the random artifact thing is just like really I, it's good like I'm fine with it I play it it's a serviceable two drop but not very exciting for me not better than fallen angel for sure. Uh, Goblins of the Flarg is a 1-1 one, one for 1 red. It has Mountain Walk, uh, and if at any time you control any dwarves, bury Goblins of the Flarg. This is just not a great card, unfortunately. Uh, this, okay, pointing something out here. Uh, a lot of creatures during the original like start of Magic, which this was very near the start of Magic, uh, this set, and this is a reprint set of a lot of other things, the Dark, etc. Uh, Chron or, um, yeah, antiquities, things like that. Uh, this is not, like, the creatures were just bad. Uh, not all of them, obviously. Some of them were fine, but, like, this is just a really bad example of kind of how the creatures panned out. They were random. They didn't really uh, have a big impact, I guess. But again, that's not to say all of them were bad, because they weren't, but spells really took precedence in the original uh, game. Things like I mean, the Power 9, obviously, a lot of those are artifacts, but obviously the instants and sorceries are great. Uh, Time Walk is fantastic for two mana, so yeah, this just not great, unfortunately. Uh, Boomerang is an instant for two blue. Return target permanent to its owner's hand. This is a good example of a very good tempo spell. Uh, for two blue, it's a little bit, like, edgy just because you have to have two blue, not one of any color and a blue. Uh, makes it a little bit tricky in a two color deck, maybe even a three color deck, but very powerful, definitely worth playing. Not a pick over Fallen Angel, but I do like it. Uh, Metamorphos is a is one green for a sorcery. Sacrifice a creature to add a to add an amount of mana equal to its casting cost plus one to your mana pool. This mana may be of any one color. Use this mana only to cast summon spells. So only creatures. Uh, summon spells was kind of the old way of saying creatures. Uh, this is like not great. I'm not a fan of this card. Uh, you really are reliant on what's in your hand and you're not, especially in limited, going to be able to sculpt that very easily. Uh, and so Metamorphos, uh, Metamorphosis, excuse me, I mispronounced that, uh, is really not my favorite kind of card. Uh, Transmutation is our last card here. One and a black for an instant. Until the end of the turn, switch target creatures, power and toughness. Effects that alter power, alter toughness and said, and vice versa. This is a really tricksy kind of card. This is okay as a like combat trick almost. Uh, if something has really high power and or excuse me, really high uh, toughness and low power, you can switch it and block it, and then ideally you can win combat, do something really interesting like that. But uh, in general, this is just kind of a combat trick at best, in my opinion. Really, not something that I'm super excited about. Uh, so to me, it's a very clear Fallen Angel. I do believe that's the rare of the pack as well. I'm fairly certain of that. So I really like that card. Uh, definitely the pick in my opinion. But if you disagree, then please let me know in the comment section below. And as always, if you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment down below. I'd really appreciate it. And of course, if you have really enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. I will see you guys in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.